are recording. We are live. And welcome again, everybody, to the Lightwave Users Group, our first meeting on Twitch. Um, excited to have everybody here. I'm going to keep my eyes on questions here. And um, this, uh, well, if this is successful, we're going to keep doing this every month. And uh, I figure we'll do this on Sundays because Sunday's usually a good day where everybody's not working. And chances are you're not working, you're relaxing, so it's probably a, a good hour <coughs> for for those in Europe. We've been getting a lot of Europeans, especially on my particular streams. So, no, I should probably share a little bit more as to who I am to everybody, and then we're going to go right into the presentation because we don't have a whole lot of time left. And and pretty much, Kim shared with you the bulk of what's new in Lightwave 2018, as he as he should. He's it's, it's, properly shut so and um, but I like some of the some of the modeling tools in here and some of the other little features I'm gonna I'm gonna share just a little bit but but on I do a weekly stream I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of throw it up here so you guys can see it um, it's it's uh, Chrome illusion it's on twitch I'm gonna go here to twitch I'm gonna type it in here um, twitch.tv for for slash Chrome illusion all right so my next stream is gonna be this Monday I'm gonna go ahead and just drop this down in the chat box as well. And thank you, Ken. Ken just put uh, Oliver's OD's uh, tools, uh, set tools or tool set 2018. Um, Virgin Pi just um, um, placed it in there. So Virgin Pi is Ken 9. So it's right there. So definitely check that out. And I'm gonna kind of drop in this other link here that's gonna go directly to my weekly stream in Lightweb. I usually do um, Lightweb streams three, uh, two to three days a week. And uh, this one coming up on Monday is, is, is modeling the Sea View and Lightwave. I've been actually modeling this in 2015. Now I've got some of the newer features uh, and advances in 2018. I get to apply it. So, and we've, I've been doing stuff like phasers and, and other starships and this real fun stuff um, that we all can identify with, with, with from our childhood, from the old sci fi shows. I always thought that was kind of interesting and fun to do. But to give you um but join this so sub subscribe or or follow me so that every every time i go on you're notified so our lightwave users group meetings will only happen <coughs> excuse me i'm getting over a cold only happen once a month i'm doing these streams every week usually several times a week all right so so most definitely follow me here and um, and of course as i reach as i find other people who also do lightwave streams on twitch I'll kind of you know give you guys a little the link connection so we can kind of keep the community um, live and going, and I'll, I'll just share a little bit more about who I am. So I know a lot of you guys probably have no idea, um, you know, you know my background and all of that stuff. So I'm an author and, and a digital artist. So I've written about eight books. Um, I'm going to come over here and just take a look at this. Here are some of the books that I've written. And these are um, international, and um, you can get them in the local bookstores. Um, the latest one is the 3D Photoshop for Creative Professionals. It comes with an app. Let's see if I can. This should be hit it right here. Hopefully, it goes to Amazon. Nope, that goes. That's actually going to um, the page link. So let's see. This this goes kind of 3D Photoshop. So um, I've been involved with New Tech since version 5.6. For creative professionals and hopefully here I'll just do it this way hopefully I, I, I'll get a an Amazon link I should be right over here all right I think that's it there professionals I think that's so that's the Google Play link and well hell I'm not gonna worry about it all right so that's my latest book let's see if I can even get a, a larger view of this all right, so it's 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 create now part of the chapters is using Lightwave, other portions are actually creating 3D 3D natively inside of Photoshop. Um, it comes with an app, so I've always been involved with this. I always been fascinated with 3D, um, you know, applications um, creatively. So and I'll share more with that uh, of, with with you guys as well. I am an instructor at Otis College Arts and Design in Los Angeles. Um, I, 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 I'm in their digital imaging department. I do the, the Photoshop and uh, um, uh, um, workshops. That that's, that's also includes digital painting and 3D and so all that stuff. But, um, but anyways, um, let's, 
I love Lightwave. I, 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 I picked it up in version 5.6. In fact, I've got right behind here the original book that I used to get started with. And I'm wondering if you guys remember these books. <laughs> I wonder if you remember this one. All right. And uh, the author, one of the authors is Dave Gerard. He's a, a personal friend of mine. And let me kind of tilt it a little bit so it's not so glossy. Lightwave 3D Applied. And then there is that update. Remember, this is version 6, 5, and 7. Kind of fun stuff. <laughs> so it's like a blast to the past. I saw it sitting on the, on the, on the, on the bookshelf. So I had to um, um, actually pull it down and figure it out. Just kind of like, you know, shock you guys with a little bit of a blast from the past. Um, all right, I'm going to make... The first thing I want to cover, I want to go over my little notes here, is I want to cover this lattice tool concept. I thought that was interesting. Let me kind of make a little bit of a... Let me get the ball back here. I'm holding control and pulling that on up. Okay. I'm going to hit enter on the keyboard and hit the A key to fit that to view. And, uh, okay, so Version Pi says the videos for the uh, for his tools demos... Okay, he's talking about the videos for um, um, Oliver's um, OD tool sets for 28. Um he said and he, he mentioned he was mentioning that the demos for those are, are covering those pretty nicely. Thank you so much, Ken, for, for posting that. Great information. Um when I'm working in Lightwave, I like to kind of like work as efficiently as possible. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure. It's kind of my way of working. Um I like to work in little these little little drop menus here. I place everything inside here. And um uh, this one of the tools I thought was interesting, it's kind of similar to a tool that let me kind of go over here to modify all right it's similar to spline guide remember spline guide all right so we can actually use spline guide to actually you know you know shape things in very you know small or large places for example if I hit the N key and I want less curves I can you know bring this back you can see that's more, that's more, oops, I didn't mean to go that far, but let's go over here, do this here. All right, so I went into the X direction, and I'm pulling down, all right, and I can, and I can even, um, let's see, let's go to my scale, look at the scale here. But anyways, it's this this concept of being able to large, to, to actually, to to manipulate shapes just very quickly, just just large um, volumes or spaces in, 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 on, on your object. So I always enjoyed that particular tool, but we have something I thought was very nice that that is a, that is an update to that or that works in a similar way, and that's the lattice tool. So if I come here, I'm going to right click. Um, actually, it's a Control Shift left click. I'm using a Wacom pen, so normally to get this menu, it's, it's a Control Shift and click, and I can access it but I have that functionality applied to the top button on my Wacom pen so I can just you know click it here and bring it on down um, so I'm gonna come right down here to my modify I keep everything in the proper category so um, if I ever if I ever forget uh, if I ever if I ever don't I want to add something in here I know where to get it in the menu so go to my modify and um, right down here, let's actually go select this. So I want to go spline guy, spline guy. That's a modify tab right there. Okay. Um, spline bridge, spline guide, modify. Let me see what I'm missing here. All right, our little lattice tool and modify transform. Let's go ahead and just select this here. I shall, I'd rather I rather go for the for the actual um, shapes. All right. So normally under the modify, transform, okay, and then we share the lattice tool right there. And I thought I put it right in under here. So modify, and I thought I put that right at the top, but for some reason I'm not seeing it in here. But I know where it is. Okay, no big deal. I've got it right here. All right. So lattice tool. I'm going to select it. All right, so it puts this box around it, which I thought was very, very interesting. So now what I can do is target any of these tools and start manipulating stuff around. 
So I'm thinking this may be real handy for um, for building characters, and this may be handy just for um, even ships or weapons if you wanted to kind of like give it a different a different flow or shape. So right now what I'm doing is I'm actually it's almost like working with the pen tool in Photoshop, right? Let's hit the zero key and bring us to full view. Hit the A key to fit in a view. All right. And I can grab each point. I can grab the outside and um, start manipulating the shape. I can grab several points. So if I hold the shift key, I'm, 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 I'm grabbing several points and I should be able to move a whole section in and out. All right. So I'm going to pull this back a little bit let's go here and grab help the shift key grab several of these and see it's going to move all those points in and out so it usually practical application of this is up is up to your imagination right it's up to your imagination so I like that so once my my changes now let's go ahead and hit the end key here let's see what options we have in here uh, Activates already on. Let's come right over here and go to a ball. Now I can tell the um, the deformer around it to, to be to be more circular shape as opposed to a rectangle, which I think might be more handy for particular types of objects. So that's a I, I kind of like that little that little tool there. I might, I might come handy. I might, in some of the modeling that I'll do and, and during the week, I think I'll, I'll start to utilize this. Hit the enter key to commit to changes. All right, and there we go. So it's got its shape, all right? Okay, so that's your, that's one lattice tool. Let's look at another. Um, let's go ahead and just, just get rid of this one. And let's go and create another ball. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, go create um, a couple of large spheres. So shift, Oh, we'll grab this one here, pull it on out. Okay, uh, Command C, T for translate. Let's move it on over. V the paste, and I'm going to bring that right about there. All right. So another one is this spline bridge. Let's see. It should be under my. Hopefully that's under my modifying. Yeah, sp the spline bridge. Good, excellent. Got that there, right? I'm gonna just deselect everything. So this one intrigued me because now um, I think I can create some organic looking shapes. All right, and I'll, I'll, I'll share with you what, what I'm talking about in just a moment. I'm gonna grab two surfaces. Let's go ahead and Come over to here, hit the zero key, put it all in full view. Let's close all this out, get out of the way. Hit the A key, fit in view. And I want to grab two surfaces and I want to bridge them together. But I want to bridge them together um, to create some, maybe some organic shape or organic feel to it. If I select this polygon and I want it to bridge to some other polygon on the surface. So something that's going to have the same amount of points, I would assume. All right, there, there they are, they're both selected. And I'm gonna come over here to the modify and I'm gonna grab my spline bridge and it's gonna pull them together, okay? Now, what we have is what, again, similar to our pen tool in programs like Photoshop, right? I can start to manipulate the physical, um, 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 physical shape, but I need to add more geometry to it to be more successful with it, right? So I'm gonna go to the end key and I can go to my divisions and just slide it over and add more geometry to it, all right? Now it gives me the ability to grab one of the spline handles. And what and I'm, this is what I'm noticing. You have to be right on it. So let me see if I can get in close. You gotta be right on it. When it highlights blue like this, you, that's when you can click and drag, right? Now I can click and drag, but it's very difficult. So be, for, for new tech, my suggestion on this one is is <coughs> create the the active um, activation surface a little bit you know wider around that point so it's easier to click and drag right so now I can start creating this these interesting shapes I can go to the other side 
Again, it's just a spline. And bring it on up. All right. So, um, because you can play with your your twists. It's twisting it around a little bit. The first and second twist. I haven't really found a practical application for the twist yet, but you know that that that, that option is there. Okay, so now that we have this, what's beautiful is that I can also continue to use this particular um, um, no technique for subdivision surfaces, right? So I just stopped it. And I'm going to do it again. Um, I'm going to come back over, to, but this time let me actually turn everything off, and I'm going to hit the tab key to sub get subdivision surfaces. I'm going to grab this one here and select it to join right about there. Let's go over to our there we go, our modify and spline bridge and you have this nice circular smooth like tentacle organic shape, tentacle like shape. And I can come over here and start to play around with this. And I just started playing around with it fairly recently. And I can see some practical applications for this already. So I'm going to hit the Enter key, deselect this, go grab another one. I'll go grab this top one. Maybe I'll bring it around the sides here to connect to this one. And I'm going to go to my menu, go to my Modify tab, and then come right over here to my, um, let's see, my Spline Bridge. There we go. So I thought this would be kind of really fun. I just wish I can the, the the pin or the the mouse would connect a lot easier. So you guys, you know, you play around with it and see um, what can be done. I'm thinking like <coughs> stuff like this. If you're making an astronaut with a helmet, he's got a power pack on the back, and you want to create these uh, these tubes that go from the power back to the helmet or or the other portions of his gear. This may be really handy for that. And I'm just kind of using my imagination. Remember, I used to use, what was that called? It was like a, a magic bevel where you actually would drag it, you know, free-handed around. This is kind of like that, but it, but this gives you a lot more control is, is my thoughts on it. Yeah, okay. So hit the Enter key. That commits my changes. And, of course, I can, you know, give this particular... Um, select it bridge its own set of uh, own surface sets as well so I figured that 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 that's that's a pretty fun one all right so what else do we have um, let's talk about live array I'm gonna go ahead and just delete this one out of here let's go back to my four up view let's go ahead and get a, a rectangle and I'm gonna put this something just like this so live array is so very welcome because I can't tell you how many times do you want to duplicate an object in an array and we can't see what it looks like before we do it. But now we can, right? So it's like most 3D programs can actually preview your array before it actually commits to changes. And I'm so glad that we have it now. All right, here, I'm, I'm going to pull it back a little bit. We're going to go to the top view. Okay. So um, there's our object. Let me see where I put that in there. And I believe I put that, it's probably under the Multiply tab. And I'm going to go to Array. All right. And there it is automatically. Um, this is, this is you see this, this almost a light or, or navy blue outline here. That's uh, your preview. And I'm going to go to my N key for my numerics. Okay. And we can decide how many I want on the X, Y, and Z axis. And let's see the offset here. Bring that off so I can, there we go. Now we can split them up a little bit. That's the offset on the X axis. How about the offset on the Z axis? I'm going to manually drag it. And I'm going to hit the A key so that we can fit this into view. See, we'll see what's happening here. So I get to preview all this way before I commit my changes. It's really, really nice. All right, really nice. Um, we can even go radial, right? I have rectangle as a type here. Go to the radial as a type. 
I'm just gonna play with this. So I can actually physically drag right on the interface, right? So let's go ahead and go to the top view. And I can just drag it in or out to determine the distance, the radial distance. Let's go back to here. And of course, any view I can I can I can do the same. So this is this is this is going to be really handy. We can mess around with the angle here. See, I'm, I'm rotating the object slightly, and I can just I'm just dragging, just to kind of get an idea visually what of, of how it's going to look look like as an end result. Uh, we can offset it so that it, so they're not all so consistent. I can set that as well. Now I got offset mode between. If we go to total, it's a little subtle. It's what I'm what I'm seeing here. Um, X axis. We can rotate on the X axis. I can just choose this manually. Y axis, right? And go to our Z axis. It's nice. I like this. I think this is going to be one of the most practical um, upgrades in Lightwave. This is something we've been wanting for a long time. So I want to like see preview everything before I do it, and then make adjustments, get it just right, make sure everything's connected just right, and then we can hit our enter, and we're happy. Okay. So you, what do you guys think? You think that might be a uh, you know something practical for your workflow to uh, use uh, for uh, as well? Pretty cool. Yeah, isn't that pretty cool? I think it's pretty cool. All right, all right now. Um, let's take a look at something else. In fact, oh, let's see. Let's look at that new surface preview, okay? Let's create several different objects real quick. I'm going to delete these real quick. And I'm going to make several different objects. We're going to put them all in their own layer. So shift zero or shift O, we're going to make a little box here. Not my box, but a but a, um, a sphere. I'm going to go to layer two. I'm just hitting number two on the keyboard. And then shift X for a uh, box. Okay. Okay, hit enter to commit my changes. Let me go to my F7 for layers. Okay, I'm going to double click this one and call it sphere. Now, it's important that you keep your objects in separate layers, especially when you go on the layout and you'll see why even more importantly in just a little bit. So this one's going to be the rectangle. Spot right. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to hit the number three key on my keyboard to go to layer three. And how about if I go to my create tab and let's go get a cone. And I'm going to do one last thing. Um, let me just rename that one cone. And let's do one last layer. I want to do a little boolean effect here. I'm going to come over and grab my disk. And let's go here. I'll just put it in the side view. Make it about so big. Pull that on out. All right. Hit my enter key. I'm going to copy that, put it in a new layer, all right? And I'm going to put the other one in the background. So Shift H is going to be my resize tool. So if I resize it down, now I'd set my background objects to take on a red overlay so it's easier for me to see and easier for you guys to track. Hit the H key, stretch it out. I'm going to Boolean this out, that's all. Let me kind of get this... Uh, Hit the T key for translate. I'm going to put it right there in the center. Hit the quotation key to switch to foreground and background colors. So what we're going to do, in essence, as you, as you already surmised, I'm sure, is cut the red one out of this big one. Shift B for Boolean. Subtract it. Done. Okay. Now I'm going to get rid of this one. Go to this uh, this cutting object. I'm going to get rid of it, and I'm going to keep that one. Let's go to my uh, my layers and call this one tube. All right, there we go. So if I turn them all on, 
there. They're all, as a matter of fact, let's, uh, let's kind of offset them just a little bit so it's easier to see. Let's go ahead and go to the top view. Go to the, um, I'll keep the ball where it is. Go to the rectangle, put the ball in the background. Set it off to the side. Um, put um, that one in the background. I'm going to go to the, the cone. Put this off to the side. And go to the tube. And let's just bring that up high. All right, so they all have a different space, a 3D space. It doesn't matter exactly where they're going to be. I'm going to save this one. And how about I'm going to go save this. I want to go. I have a, I have a lightweight uses group folder here. So I'm going to hit my O key and tell it to use my lightweight uses group folder. And LW user group meeting right there. Done. Okay. I'm going to save this. And how about if we call this one multi object? I'll probably use this for several aspects of the tutorial. Multi object. There we go. All right, cool. All right, now. So let's go bring this into. And right up here at the top, I'm going to synchronize it with layout. And then let's also send this to layout. To layout. Oops. Pull it on over. I'm going to maximize that. Click on the right button here. All right. So send object to layout. Cool. I'm going to get rid of all this stuff. This is stuff I was in layout before. Let's kind of close. All. I'll keep the presets here. Let's open that up. There we go. Okay. All right, here we are. What I really like, I love this VPR it's just so much faster. So I'm going to go to my light source. Let's bring this on up and bring it out of the way just a little bit. Let's go ahead and rotate it and point it toward There we go. I'll point it toward my objects. Okay, that works. Jazz for the time being. Love this VPR rendering. Bring it on down. Let's kind of do a quick rendering of this just to see what it's going to look like. All right, I'm going to go back to my shaded view. And I'm, I'm just working in the scene view right now. Getting a little closer. Taking a, take, take a quick look, look at VPR. What's beautiful about VPR is that is the rendering engine now in Lightwave. Before we had like a um had so we had like a, a a layout what was it it was kind of like an open gl renderer we had um, a type of a a rendering system and modeler we had a separate one for for the render itself where it gives you a complete render specularity and everything um and then but here everything is vpr so every, everything's a complete render which i really like and it's fast it's so much faster it's like people are spending all this money on other packages or rendering systems to render this stuff out, and Lightwave does it internally, which is what I love about it. Okay. Um, I love these little surface presets. Okay. So I'm in the render tab. I hit the presets button. That comes up. Ken already talked about this. I was supposed to talk about these, but Ken pretty much covered everything I wanted to cover. Um, you know, double clicking on it, applying it. Okay. So right now they all have the same the same surface. So they're all gonna take on um you know, whatever um surface you, that you're gonna apply to it. And right over here, if I click under the automotive under user, I can there's other workspaces in here. Let me kind of drop these down here. Go to built, I have glass, I've got leather, I've got liquid. If I go to liquid and let's add some liquid to it. It's um it's pretty cool. I like this. I love this. It's so much faster. All right. But what I like also is right down here, I have a surface preview. You got your VPR, which you are which is this this is what we're gonna get us the VPR. So we're gonna render in VPR. Um and here's something else I, I should probably mention. Matter of fact, let's give it a different surface so it's easy. I'm gonna give it the, the blood surface. Ah, you can't even see it. 
let's go let's go to the auto automotive and let's give it one of these and see now watch when i take the mouse and scroll and, and wash over it it will render that area first right see where it's rendering if i come down here See, it starts to render these areas first. So you can decide what you want to render before anything else. Like if you, you know, you know, you know, a client's watching, and they just want you to see, they want to see how how the headlights are going to look quickly. You can just mouse, so take your cursor and you just hover over it and mouse over it. And then that area gets, gets preference over everything else. I love that aspect. In fact, Ken was the one that taught me about that one. So I thought that was actually very, very cool. Okay. Now, if we come down here to Surface Preview, um, remember we used to get the old previews with like, like the little spheres, those small little spheres, and they really weren't all that accurate. This is accurate, right? So if I want to, you know, preview this before I actually put it on the model itself, this is your uh, your preview option. It's right below the VPR Surface Preview. You can utilize this. And what I should have done, <coughs> honestly, is give these different surfaces so I can apply them. But I think you guys are getting the point. And we don't have a whole lot of time. And see, if I mouse over here, it'll start to render these areas first. If I come down here to the bottom, to these objects, it'll start to render those areas next. All right, I want to make sure I'm not uh, I'm missing any questions here. So... Um, you're more of a render guy. So that's uh, Birkin, the real one, mentions that he's more of a render guy uh, these days, but uh, turn to watch modeling enhancements. I mean, I love the model. I mean, I love to build things. So my weekly broadcast, I'm not only building things, I'm also going to texture it and render it um, so that you guys get to see a whole complete process um, of working in, in, in 3D. Let's see, and this is, oh, let me see if I can pronounce your name um, properly here. Um, what does that say? That says Cole or CDA 3DL, I'm not quite sure, live. Uh, welcome. Um, he says uh, it would be way better for um, if the LightWave renderer would support GPU uh, rendering as well. Okay, now I don't have an answer to that. I think that's a Ken question. Um, I don't know if Ken is still here. To, don't you hate it when you know somebody can answer it and they leave early? <laughs> so I don't know if it is supporting GPU or not. Did, did Ken say that it, it did not? And I just didn't hear the answer to that. Um, all right, so that's, that's always, always enjoyed that. Now, let's get, show you something else. Let's get out of here. Let's go back to our, uh, our texture shaded view. And there's this neat little feature that's been added into um, Lightwave where if you want to quickly preview textures or you want to quickly preview a result of, of sorts, you can do it with um, primitives that are unique to scenes. In other words, these primitives, you're not going to bring them to the modeler. You can't do it. You just they just stay in the scene file. They they're they're gonna be saved with the scene file, but you can render them. Okay, let's go take a look at uh, um, some of those. So basically, we're talking about um, the Open VD, VDB uh, object. So I think it's I think it stands for uh, Volume Data Database. No object primitives, right? I think that's what it stands for. That's gonna be another. Uh, I'm gonna keep this open here. The little, little surface uh, renderer. And let's see. I want to grab. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to grab a null. We're going to keep these objects in here. And I'm going to grab a null. So command or control N is a new null. And we're going to call this null. We're going to say null texture. Let's go ahead and click OK. There's the null. Let's bring it up. Set it right about there, right? Now, if I go to VPR, just, just kind of keep it, what's going on? You see nothing, of course. I'm going to go back to the textured view. 
we're going to hit the P key for our object, for our property objects. We have a new primitive type in the light wave layout. And that primitive type is shape. If I target this shape, I can apply a shape to this. In fact, let's zoom on in close to it. Let's bring it out so I can see where I'm going. Oops. Okay, we're gonna bring it on in and get in a little closer. There we go. Get a little closer. There it is. Let's do, now we have a shape. Let's go over here to VPR render. All right, there it is. I can change this shape. I'm gonna stay in VPR render again. Um, sphere, I can make it a cube, cylinder. These are presets. You can't change them unless you program you can't really add anything to it in terms of um, other objects. But there we go. We got the plane. We have, we have primitives that we can utilize to do some quick bullet dynamics or some um, quick render tests without having to actually go to build other objects. So let's go grab some more water here. All right. Um, Let's go to sphere for now. Once I have this, I can apply a texture to it. See, it's selected. I can apply my textures. So this is not a real 3D object. It's virtual and it only, um, it only stays within the scene file once again. Okay. So I always thought that was that I think that can be very very handy if you want to do some quick little tests without having to go in a modeler and go back and forth between modeler and light wave. I I I vision all this eventually getting to the point where modeler and light wave and, and layout's gonna merge into one concept. But for now, um we're going in the right direction. So John Marchant says, Love it. I've got the gigabyte um oh you got the gigabytes of a FDB um, data from uh, from TFD and, and and Blender, yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> so, and uh, and Burke and the real one says Lightwave um, um, render engine is currently only CPU. Okay, confirm everybody. Okay, so it's currently only CPU. It's just a processor. Um, all right, but you know what? GPU is coming. It's coming, especially, no, I'm just waiting for the video cards, like the high-end video cards to come down a little bit in price. I'm running the 1070. Actually, right now, I'm running the Alienware 17R, the 17-inch laptop. Um, I'm utilizing the 1070 uh, desktop uh, uh, NVIDIA card, GeForce. I would like to have the 1080. And I do have the, the, the little external box for running external uh, video cards. <laughs> and, and basically, I wanted to buy the 1080, put it into the into the box, and then run it off and run the whole system off the 1080 um, power. Unfortunately, the 1080 is going to cost me close to a thousand dollars. And you know, I was you know telling everybody, you know, I was born a poor black child, so it isn't going to happen anytime soon. Sorry, <laughs> as much as I would love to have it. All right, <laughs> so let's go. Let's see, how much time do we have? Okay, we're almost there. Um, so let's talk about, oh, the light primitives I think are cool. Okay, the light primitives I think are very cool. So in other words, we have lights, right? But what if we build something in Modeler and we want that shape in Modeler to actually become a light without adding extra um, bells and whistles and modeler and, and some and some you know convoluted workaround to turn those polys into into powergons or luxagons or, or something of that sort. All right, this is very cool. Let's go back in the model. Let's get out of here. Let's go back to the shaded view, and we're going to go back in the modeler. Hit the F12. I'm going to. Keep these objects. 
tell you what, we're gonna we're gonna keep what we have. I've got a better idea. We're gonna just stay here for for right now. So I've got all my objects on separate layers, and I want to apply a light type to them. Okay. So I'm gonna go to Shift L for my light. All right. So I'm targeting my light source, which is right here in front of me. Hit the P key for my properties. Let's bring up the light properties on over. And I'm going to change the light type. Now, currently, we have a distant light source. If I drop it down, we've got something new here. It's called primitive. So I can select any shape I have, which is the reason why I cut this one out. Remember, I, 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 I um, cut this one out and make that two. Right? It's the reason I did that was to show you this particular feature. Now, I'm going to go to VPR. So I'm going to come right down here, go to VPR. But to see the light type, I need to tell it to be visible to camera. So under the light properties, right below the effect specular, I'm going to target make visible the camera. All right, let me get out of here. And go back. Okay, good. So there's my light source. All right, make visible the camera. Now, this is what we're going to do. Once the primitive is selected, right down here under the primitive, we need to select the primitive. Right now, we have nothing targeted. If I drop it down, how about that object sphere right there? And if we come back over to VPR, there it is. Let's kind of zoom in a little closer. There it is. Now, how about if we choose that um, object rectangle? There it is. So if I hit the, the, the Y key, I can rotate the light source or rotate that primitive associated to that light source. Get in a little closer. And it's illuminating everything. Um, and I'll show you in just a moment. So if I come down to here and go grab that tube. All right. So it's got repositioned somewhere else. I'm rotating it. Let's kind of rotate it around. I want to try to, there we go. We see inside the tube now. So it actually is accurate. It represents with accuracy the particular object that I want it to become. I thought that was kind of very cool. It's not cool. So I've got, uh, uh, let's say, is that CDL 3D Live says cool. Well, whoa. I know it's kind of bizarre, isn't it? Now it's, it's figuring out how do I want to use this? So basically the galaxy is, is the limit. You know, imagination, no limit to it. Just figure out how we're gonna how we're gonna apply this. Let's make sure that question. Okay, good, cool. All right, not missing any questions here. So now that becomes a light source. So let's kind of pull it back. There's my objects. Remember, I'm in I'm in I'm in a scene view. Hit my T key, bring it on closer to these. All right, bring it down close, and we can play. We can play around with the intensity values up here. Distance on or off. You see that got a little brighter there. Turning off the dis the intensity fall off. So with the fall off on, we get less of an effect because the the further away your light source is from your object, it's calculating the fall off of the light intensity. If we turn that off then it's going to be a little stronger. I can come over here to the light intensity. Let's see. Let's go ahead and turn this on and off. I want to make sure. There we go. So as I start to play with the options here. Now, I also have the Lux option. Let me go to that one there. Let me see if we're going to get much of a difference even with the intensity going. So just, I'm going to play around with the intensity. Okay. 
So that's handy. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna play around with this quite a bit, especially when I start making 3D scenes, um, and see how I can utilize this practic practically as a light source. All right. So um, the last thing I wanted to share with you before we go is the volumetrics in Lightwave, and I've actually got a scene file for that. I'm gonna utilize the scene file that uh, New Tech has given us. Let's go ahead and open this up. I'm going to clear this scene out. Nope, just clear it. I'm gonna load, not an object, but I'm gonna load a new scene. And part of your content, let's see, Lightwave Projects, I should have Let's see a zero lightwave content up here. There we go. 2018 content. Under the scene tab, I'm going to go and find my. Is that the open VDB or let's see. Let me see if that's the one I'm looking for. I think it is. I think it's the volume metrics, right? There we go. Um, smoke explosions. Lightwave scene. I remember this. So it's looking for, oops, it's not, there we go. Let's go over here to, let's see, hopefully this is going to work. There we go. All right. So what it's using is, is, this is very fascinating. It's using volume metrics to create these effects. So your render times are going to be a lot less. It's very, very cool. And I can rotate it around a little bit. It's three dimensional. It's very, very cool. So we're gonna do, what I wanna do is actually do a whole presentation just on volumetrics, okay? And another whole presentation just on lighting. Um, I really wanna share more with you with this stuff, but um, we got about, close to five minutes left according to my clock here. So what I like to do is uh, is dedicate a meeting just for volumetrics or or particularly just for um, node editing. I know I've got a lot of requests from people to do presentations just on how to, how to work with nodes, understand <coughs> what they mean and how to connect them to get some dynamic effects. Um, particle effects is another request that I had. Rigging is another one that, that's something I, I definitely get involved. I'm going to be calling on other, some of you professionals out there to do presentations at each monthly meeting and so that we can um, really you know, grow our knowledge out together. And that's the one thing I was, I, I was always fascinated about the, um, about the Lightwave community is that they're always willing to share. Always willing to share. I want to kind of take a look at some other ideas. Primitive PBR. Uh, let's see what do we have inside this hero render. There's one in particular. There we go. Okay. Let's go get that explosion. Okay. There we go. And let's go take a look at this one here. Let's go to our BPR. There we go. Okay. So, really fascinating stuff. Okay, so the galaxy is the limit. And I'm kind of rotating it around a little bit. And then it's going to re-render it uh, real time, really fast. Love it. Absolutely love it. So let me ask you guys this. Any questions? Version Pi, the Version Pi is back. So you want to share more with you, but uh, Ken took, took all my time. <laughs> Oh, Ken, you, listen, I didn't care. I mean, I mean, you, it's, it's like you have so much to share. The danger of this, of these things, of these presentations that we do is that we share too much. And, and it, it starts to go over people's heads. So it's going to make it so much easier on us as presenters if we just cut slice up small slices and go in detail to the small slices that over time when we do these meetings, it's all going to you know piece together the whole pie, right? It's going to open up a whole new world to us. And that's the idea. Um, I spend more time trying to figure out what not to cover rather than what to cover. 
because um, you can you can do too much. It's kind of oh, I gotta show you this, and I gotta show you this. But then after a while, there's that information overload. So I think it's always wise to kind of like um, you know just start with small. I mean, as an instructor, that's what I've learned. It's a, break everything up in small, understandable chunks and just build on that. And then build on that a little bit, and build on that. You know, keep building, keep building, building a little bit at a time. So that once a part of it, a little bit's ingrained in your memory and understanding, then you can, you know, see the overall picture, how, how all this can be applied to the industry or to your own particular work. Um, let's see. Um, Birkin, the real one, it says, yep, light wave community has always been very caring uh, with a sense of sharing. And I totally agree. That was one, one <coughs> excuse me, that was another reason I stayed involved with Lightwave because people were always willing to share. Now, try asking Maya guys if they're willing to share, all right? They're not going to tell you anything. They spent tens of thousands of dollars going to art, going to art school or animation school. They're not going to just share their stuff with you. It's kind of, it's a weird mentality, but the Lightwave guys, always willing to share. And those are the guys that are in the trenches in the industry um, actually using it to make this stuff work, right? Make your effects work. So um, uh, Neon, Neon Z Effects is laughing out loud. He says, by the way, if you guys have uh, Amazon Prime, you can connect to the Twitch Prime. That's right. That's that's important. Um, okay, thank you, Neon, uh, Neon, uh, Neon Effects. If you have Amazon Prime, use your Amazon Prime account to connect to your Twitch Prime. A Twitch account, and your Twitch will automatically go Prime, so it cuts out all the commercials and gives you other extra benefits. So we're gonna do, we're gonna continue to do our lightweight meetings every month, and I'm thinking, let's see, this is this the first Sunday of the month? I'm gonna keep it the first Sunday of the month. I have my, I have my Photoshop user group meetings on the first Saturday. I figured I'll go ahead and use that first weekend. To kind of knock off both user group meetings. So and on Sundays we'll have the Lightwave users group. All right. So this meeting has been recorded, and um, and my uh, my webmaster is going to get this up there ASAP. Um, gosh, it's been an honor being here with you guys. I'm going to share more. Make sure you follow me on my page. I think did I, did I put that up there? Um, yeah, we're going to do it again. There's my link. So follow me on my Twitch page so that you guys can come and participate in more things having to do with Lightwave, um, where I'm building starships and weapons, and, and, and I will be utilizing 2018. And you guys can get involved and ask questions and, and tell me to try something and, or share, share stuff that you've done. I mean, people come on those, on, onto those Twitch presentations and say, hey, can I show my, my JPEG file of what I just created in Lightwave? I say, yeah. We put it up there. We share it with everybody. Or they'll, sh they'll, they'll they'll show me an image of their work and they'll ask me, hey, you know, I had a problem with this texturing technique. How does this look? And then other people online can come in and offer suggestions. Um, and I'm also going to be teaching a, um, a light wave class. It's a five-week light wave class for those who want to get involved. Let me kind of go and find the link here for you. Uh, all right, let's uh, don't save that one. Let's go find the, all right, I'm going to have to go to, Give me a hot second here. I'll go get it. Go to my Word file. There we go. And go get the link for you. So it's a five-week class. It's, uh, you sign up through Eventbrite. We meet one day a week. Um, it's all online. You get microphone rights, so we're talking to one another. And it's that live interaction, okay? So let me go and open. And let's go to my promo information right there. All right. All right, let's kind of bring this down. It's a little large. And there we go. So there's the Lightwave Workshop. I'm going to put it in here. There. So copy and paste that. Would love to see you guys on board with that as well. We had about, we consistently, we had anywhere from 25 to 30 people today. That's pretty damn good. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Make sure you you follow me on the Chromolution page. Um, and make sure you um, you join the, let's see, make sure you join the mailing list. Let me get you the link for the mailing list so that you guys are always going to be notified of every monthly meeting. There we go. I'm posting it in. 
Okay, so you're very welcome, everyone. You're very welcome. Thank you, Sinsat. Um, we're going to see you next month. I'm going to log off now. Thank you, Ken. Great job. Thank you, everybody, for participating. It's been an honor. And we'll see you next time. We'll see you on Monday this week. All right, see you soon.